Hi everybody, I'm Gwendolyn Sturk and I'm privileged to have Margot McDermott, the state representative for the 37th district where our office is seated, be with us today. Welcome, Margo. Hi, go ahead. We appreciate you coming out. And one of the things that I have to tell you is you know that we're an office full of a lot of women around here. <laughs> More women than men, and that's okay. You've been a real advocate for women during the time that you've been in Springfield. There's been many things that you have done. Can you recap for us and talk about the various bills and your passion for this area? One of the biggest things I did was to work on the rape kit tracking, the sexual evidence tracking. We had the situation, remember, where rape kits were just in a closet somewhere. Right. They weren't being processed. They, yep. Nobody knew where they were. Right. They weren't being tracked. So I had a bill that created a task force. I chaired the task force and kept everybody focused on it. We came out with some findings um, and that legislation was signed into law. So the Illinois State Police will be creating a tracking system which is going to be used by law enforcement, right. by the medical providers, um, by the state's attorneys, so that everyone will have access to what the information is and where in the system it is. It will also, the most important part, is that it's going to be um, accessible by the victim. So the victim can find out where is my uh, kit? Is it being processed? Did my local law enforcement send it to the state police right. laboratory? Um, where is it? And so I think that's important for people to regain a semblance of control. And as soon as you start measuring and highlighting something like this, you realize that we don't have the right amount of resources focused on it. One of the problems that we have in the state of Illinois is we don't have enough evidence technicians or even labs to process the kits the way they need to be. And the Capitol bill that was passed this year will be providing more labs and more technicians. So That's I think fantastic. it's a win-win right. for victims of sexual assault in the state and of just Illinois. Just across the board, all the work. And I remember when you were on the task force and we talked about that a couple of years ago and to see all that implemented here and, and going forward. So that's a real accomplishment for women. I know also that you were really um, an advocate for parity among salaries and asking those questions. Tell everybody a bit about that, how that relates. Well, we have a new uh, bill that went into effect saying that you can't, you can't ask wage history. A right. woman could volunteer it, but one of the situations that you've got is that women are uh, often paid less than men. So if if you are at a low point, perhaps not in parity with men that are doing the job that you're doing, right. and you, you switch jobs, now that lower wage is being perpetuated because you've been right. in a situation where you have to reveal it. So now the value has to be put on the job itself. Absolutely. And we hope that that will be. Now that's not the only reason um, by any means that there's um, a lack of parity between men's and women's pay. Correct. But here's a one way that we can, right. so can one address step. it. Yes. And to try to get more parity among them. And I think that, that you know, that's gone into place and it'd be interesting to see if there's studies done in the future to see if that has changed over time yeah. as a result of that new law. So that's another area. You also had a program where you really talked about voices. That was an acronym for a bill that looks at assisting women who are applying for the um, uh, visas that have to do with uh, people who've been victim of sexual assault or of sex trafficking. And what we were finding is that uh, the victims were not able to get the police reports in a timely manner that would enable them to apply for the visa. So we now have a situation where there's a time limit by which law enforcement has to provide these records to the person applying for the visa so they can move forward with their visa application. And I think that's a really important I think too, you know, improvement. They, and we want people to use the immigration system right. and not to circumvent it. So we have right. to make it a system that people can use. And that it's fruitful and it's, it's right. beneficial in, in coming back. Now I know you also worked and you're currently working on some bills that it have an effect on women. Tell us about that. Well, I have a bill right now where we're looking at what information the tollway releases with respect to um, a subpoena in a civil case or a warrant in a criminal case. And there was a bad situation last year where um, someone used that subpoena to get uh, the person they were stalking their new phone number sure. and their new email. And okay. so, we want the tollway to provide information to proper requests, but not for it to be abused by right. stalkers or other people looking to victimize 
drivers. Right. <laughs> and it's so important because there are a lot of issues where it has unintended consequences, right? Right. Meaning that, you know, somebody's using that subpoena process to really harass somebody. Yes, or exactly. Or to get inappropriate information. Right, right. And as compared to using it for something that might be more valid. Margaret, I know also the state, and you've been actively involved with addressing the issues of sexual assault, for example, like the statute of limitations. Can you tell us a little bit about that? One thing that we've done recently was to remove the statute of limitations for cases like that because sometimes the victim is in a position where they're unable to move forward. Uh, right after the incident, mm -hmm. you know, within a couple of years. So get rid of the statute of limitations and allow people to bring the case. You still have to prove your case. Sure. Just because you weren't able to step forward doesn't mean you don't have to meet the burden of proof. Right. But we need to look at what we know about how trauma affects victims and see if we can open up that statute of limitations. Sure. And we're certainly not saying that women are the only victims of sexual assault, but it certainly has been a passion of yours to make sure that that's available. Also in the area of revenge porn, tell us a little bit about those movements that have occurred. One of the things that we did just recently was say that if revenge, for, revenge porn affected you, you can collect money damages for how that hurt your career, the mental distress it cost you, sure the other consequences of that person releasing those images without your consent. Right. You know, overall, I think that, you know, no, you're not just there to support women's issues, but at the same time, being a strong advocate and a role model really for a lot of women in our area, we appreciate the time that you've taken to really try to get to a level of parity, a level of access, for example, by way of the rape kits, making sure that people have the protections in place to be able to reach a certain level as women. So we appreciate all the efforts that you've done in our community. I know that you're looking at a retirement in the future, and I think that having a strong woman and a role model here has been so important for our area. Thank you, Gwen. We appreciate your time.